Uh, normally here in Los Angeles at this time, you'd be listening to Sam Rubin on his own show on 97.1 KLSX, the FM talk station. Uh, but Sam has uh, graciously stepped aside today so I could come in here and deal with this situation, which, you know, is just beyond my comprehension. But, uh, you know, I've experienced blabbing about this stuff, so they bring me in and that's what happens. But but Sam is here now with us to uh, tell us about all of the, uh, as you may know, Sam, of course, is the entertainment reporter for KTLA Television, for KNX Radio here in Los Angeles. And uh, Sam is going to tell us how uh, all of this has impacted the entertainment industry, which here in Los Angeles, that's a local business, baby. Uh, Sam, how you doing? Uh, Tom, I tell you what, just a, a couple things. We'll go through this, this the colossal list of cancellations, which, of course, is utterly unimportant in uh, context with everything else. But uh, this morning at, at Channel 5, and, you know, I think many people woke up to this after the fact, and I was already up, and we were, you know, doing our news, and what was so unusual is this first shot from New York City, I think about 10 minutes after it happened, and these are fixed cameras on the World Trade Center, and you thought, oh, there's a, there's a fire of some significance in this tower, and then somebody said, oh, it might be a plane, and people were like, it couldn't possibly be a plane. That, you know, it's, a, it's an explosion of some sort. And then live on television, and now, of course, this shot being uh, replicated throughout the day, you see that second plane fly into that second oh, tower. Oh, my God. And, and, and uh, you know, and these are, you know, an audible gasp. And then it's this feeling I think all of us now have collectively had in our stomachs ever since. But to, to see it happen live and not really be aware of what it is and then people you know it's a, a large plane and then of course the the story of you as you relate throughout the day that these are commercial airliners that is just unbelievable uh and then from that to this which of course is uh, almost irrelevant but the, the latin grammy scheduled for tonight canceled the emmys on sunday canceled madonna at staples center canceled i suspect they'll reschedule that uh sporting events major league baseball day and night games all canceled the thing that that is so um Unusual to me is, you know, I think we, you now have an appreciation of, of normalcy. When does this all go away? Does it go away? And when does it all head back to normal? And does it head back to normal? And then the other thing, I don't know if you've flown commercially recently, but I've flown on both American... Sunday, and- Sam. Yeah. Sunday, I was flying back from the NAB convention. All right. And, and Tom, did you do as I did when I flew last weekend and checked in with one of those new kiosks? It's an automatic teller. I never saw yes. a person. Well, that's the thing, and I, I wonder, I mean, it, I, I, and actually, somewhat prophetically, perhaps, we talked about that on the air here. I said, you know, I just checked in, you know, somebody lifted my wallet, they could have been me, you know, they could check in. Well, I mean, I'm hearing ads, I'm not going to name any particular airline, but there's one particular airline that has been advertising the fact that now you can log on at home and print out your own boarding pass. Exactly right. Now, I, I don't know. I mean, as convenient as that is... Uh, do I really want some guy in, I don't know, the Middle East printing out boarding passes, getting on the Internet, printing out his own boarding pass? And then, uh, the, I, I, I don't know. But, Call me crazy. But then the other, the, the other side of that coin, and these are, I think, the things that you know, are going to be uh, bandied about now for several weeks to come, I suppose, is you know, if you take a flight in Israel, as an example, you check in three or four hours ahead of time, and everything but a uh, colonoscopy you go through before you get on the plane. That's right. And if we do that, then, quote-unquote, have they won. Which well, is- and we went through this uh, during the Unabomber right. situation. Right. Uh, remember, they were making us come to the airport, two and three hours before flights then. Yeah. And stand in these long lines. Uh, it, the thing is, though, that when we did that, you still have the same $8 an hour uh, nudniks or they're um, manning the x-ray machine. It, they, just, they just took long. Yeah, and then one other thing which I suspect, I haven't I've been at KTLA, so I haven't had an opportunity to, to catch everything that, that you've done here. But one thing that I imagine has been brought up, and this is the other thing that sort of chills me, is quite clearly, obviously, the people who took over these planes and, and the like, if you're fighting against people who have no regard for their own lives, and in fact, in some of these cultures, it is an honor, it is the, you know, to die for the cause, how do you fight against that? And that is, is the most sobering aspect of it. Yeah, well, we've had it so good in this country for so long. I mean, you just, just... Do you think this fundamentally changes everything or not? I think it's going to change us forever. See, I, that, uh, when you talk about getting back to normal, Sam, yeah. we ain't going back there. We're going to something else that'll be called normal eventually, but it won't be that. See, and that to me is, you know, is, is, is a shame and a pity and... and, and I, I think you're probably. I reluctantly think you're probably right, but that's a scary and sad thing. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, uh, we all remember uh, movies like Black Sunday, when a terrorist attack took place at the Super Bowl. Oh, when you when you saw and you, you people have made the references to Armageddon and Independence Day. When you saw this plane, as you've now seen the video, that 
you know, it looks like a movie, except it's more real. That's exactly right. But, I mean, when you think about movies, that, uh, and while we're talking about entertainment here, I mean, think about a movie like Die Hard, which, uh, the original Die Hard, which seemed so violent, and that things exploded, things blew up, and there was Bruce Willis running around the building, his face is all cut up because the glass is breaking. You look at that movie, that's child's play compared to what happened today. Right, you know, and that's the other thing, is I think, and, you know, people are talking about this, we are days away from two things, A, the full extent of this, and B, and this is something, you know, three of the four planes obviously bound for, everybody's going to know somebody, either in one of those buildings or on one of those planes. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, this is going to touch a lot of people, Sam. 55,000 people work at the World Trade Center. And the first plane hit at 9.03. And in New York City, they're like ruthless. I mean, 9 o'clock, you are at work at the desk. You are working. That's that. And I, I don't know if you've seen this video, but of, of the many chilling images, all of which will be repeated forever or for a very long time, because, you know, you draw this Pearl Harbor comparison, and one thing, you didn't have a zillion cameras, you know, and all this uh, live video and the like. Have you seen the shots of people with the white uh, kerchiefs in the building? Hanging out the window, yeah. hoping to be saved. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then later on, of course, that uh, those buildings just completely collapsed. Yeah, no. It's so and, and there were people, by the way, Sam, jumping out windows, not knowing what else to do. Oh. That, that, that building is 110 stories high. No. And they just didn't know what else to do, so they jumped out the window. I mean, uh, you know, and without sounding melancholy, but it's the type of thing that really just, you know, it, it puts so many other things in perspective. Yes. It honestly does. It puts everything in perspective, and uh, like I say, I, we can never go back to being the way we were. Can you ever walk through an airport now and not think about this? Can you ever get on an elevator in a, in a tall building and not think about this? Can and you, isn't that the thing? I think of windows on the world, and all. I mean, in New York City, you know, if you're a captain of industry, you, you know, oh, my office on the hundredth floor, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So now my private office in a uh, bunker somewhere out of an urban area. That, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I actually, I, I, I was thrilled to be able to come down to my studio, which is one story. Not just a few people in the building. Part of Culver City, absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to go uh, to any big uh, office tower and go to a radio show. Forget it. Yeah. I don't want to be in any office tower for any reason. Yeah. No. And then, you know, the, the other thing which will, will impact uh, Southern California is, is obviously this, and, you know, I, again, compared to everything else, none of this stuff really matters. But, uh, you know, this entertainment-based economy and the, the cancellation of all these events and, like, you know, do you, you know, when do you feel like going to the Madonna concert? Well, I don't think for a long time. When do you want to see some, you know, overpaid TV stars get their Emmys? Uh, not for several weeks or months, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, honestly, I, I don't even feel good about being in a big crowd anywhere. See that? You know, I don't know. I don't. The, the, the other strange thing is uh, I had uh, like a brief break this moment and uh, this morning and ran to the market. And you know what? In the, in the supermarket, it was people were talking about it, but there was no, you know, it was just there, there's a lot of normalcy going on here because it isn't here. It's, you know, it's there, although I guess it's the whole country. Yeah. So I, it's uh, it's frightening uh, to to think how it's going to change my my own perspective on simple things like walking down the street, or going to the airport and flying to Vegas, or uh, you know watching a, a Laker game in a crowd of twenty thousand people downtown. Yeah. I I will now I, I may maybe it'll just last a week a month a year but I to, in my mind I will always now be saying my God I'm going to be in this big crowd who knows who might decide to do something crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. Although I tend to think that that uh, people are Pollyanna to a degree. I mean, you would never in a million years have imagined this. Um, you know, I don't. I I I I think you'll still see crowds gather for things that they want to see. I think that will be a while. I remember on Sunday when I was flying back from New Orleans to Los Angeles. Uh, I remember there was some minor turbulence. Uh, there were some, some thunderstorms uh, uh, over the Texas right. and Louisiana areas, and I remember that that was scary. It was nothing. <laughs> Imagine being, I mean, try to get inside the head of a passenger on one of these planes at a Logan Airport or Dulles or Newark. They're getting on. They got their Wall Street Journal with them. They sit down. Some of these people probably fly these routes every week. They get on, and suddenly the plane is flying towards a, an office building. Right. The World Trade Center. No, so, you know, because I mean, I think the thing that so many of us think, all you think about when you're going to play, gee, am I going to get upgraded or not? Or, you know, do I yeah. get the seat that I want? And yeah, you like just sit that. there getting annoyed at everything. Sure. Yeah. How about you're sitting at your desk on like the 70th floor of the World Trade Center, just doing your job. You're a stockbroker or whatever you are, and you look out the window and there's a plane coming. 
I mean, we haven't even had time to think about this stuff. Right. But it's the stuff that it's going to give me nightmares. Well, yesterday we talked about, with regard to this sort of minor earthquake here in Southern California uh, on the weekend, are you more afraid of man or nature? And who knew how prophetic that that conversation would be? Yeah. Where obviously, uh, you know, it goes without saying that the... Uh, it's just, it's, it, 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 what's astounding to me is that, you know, we're all... At, at a base level, we're all human beings. But how these people, whomever they are, just see it so differently mm -hmm. than the rest of us. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's astounding. It's a very uh, distract. There's this feeling I'm sure you have in your stomach. I'm sure people listening have it in their stomachs. And I wonder when that will abate, if it does abate. Uh, yeah, uh, especially as, I mean, think of the things we're going to start seeing. We're going to hear the black boxes. What's that going to sound like? And they're going to play that on TV? Well, you know, the one thing, and I'm sure somebody has already said this, which, which didn't even occur to me at first, but uh, our, our pilot, Hal Fishman from Channel 5, brought this up immediately. He said there's not a pilot in the world, if you held a gun to his head, who would even do those, you know, so they obviously killed the pilots and did the planes themselves. Now, now this is what a caller said. Uh, uh, how do we know that the pilots who did this weren't, like, members of terrorist organizations who got jobs at the airlines? Oh, I know. God. <laughs> See, I, you know, again, and, 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 in, and in a way, you tell me, do you think that what, what we're doing now, giving people an opportunity to say all this, is that helpful or not? Well, people are going to say this stuff whether we're on the radio right. or not. That's true. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you have to wonder how four planes could be hijacked at the same time with, with, with three different airlines. Right. How'd that happen? No, that to me is the most egregious breach of all. And then what is also interesting this morning is you have all, and you know, they say this, you know, the, 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 the wars are fought and, and lived and died by the young. Yeah. And then you have the Richard Holbrooks and the Sandy Burgers, all the sort of formal Mideast negotiators and national security advisors. And you can, you know, hear the pomposity in their voices as they said, you know, we've said for a long time global terrorism was, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so many people saying, we told you, but, you know. Yeah. That, that, to me, has no value now. Yeah. But I, I, I just got to believe, you know, that caller might have been onto something. I don't know if it's true, but uh, you, you, could four separate terrorists walk through security, get on planes at the same time, and hijack four planes at the same time if they weren't, like, really on the inside? Yeah. And then the significance, apparently, of the date itself and, and all these other things. Oh, yeah. I need a boy. I need to talk about that. Um, I mean, the, the things we're going to be talking about and thinking about over the next year. One thing that one of these sort of national security types said that did seem to resonate is this is nothing that was planned, you know, in three mobile homes with three cell phones. Oh, yeah. By, you know, a bunch of guys who knocked over a bank somewhere. That's right. That it's, uh, you know, the, the degree of sophistication or the degree of planning and yeah. all that. This makes Timothy McVeigh renting the rider truck look like child's play. I mean, exactly this, right. this, is, exactly right. exactly. <laughs> this was incredibly well organized, and, uh, yeah. and we were just caught with our pants down. It's amazing. Yeah, well, you know, the one thing that was actually, and what's so funny is when you're in a, a newsroom and you're seeing all this, and then people are shouting to their theories. And, you know, people have talked about the, the new president, and, and what some people were suggesting is, you know, and I wish I could be more eloquent, and it's obviously not fair to lay it at his feet, but two things. When you, when you withdraw from engagement in Mideast policy, he's like, you know what, let them figure it out. Mm -hmm. That creates a vacuum for this kind of thing. And number two, he just seems so lame anyway. Yeah. You know, maybe this is the time to do this, because what's this guy going to do? Very good point. So, um... Frightening. And uh, just, again, you know, we're going to be sitting here and, and uh, how do you even go back to normal? I mean, and what do you do? I, uh, I do a show like mine, for example, and uh, I have a dilemma I have to deal with. Now, do I go back and sign racks tomorrow? Do I talk about this? How long do you talk about it? What do you do? I don't even know. I, I, that's something personally I have to figure out. Can, if you're asking me my opinion, which you're not, can you go back to signing racks tomorrow? You cannot. No, no, I'm not. I can't blow anybody up. Right. Uh, it's not even funny today. Right. It's not even like, uh, no. uh, yeah. So, and then all, and, and, and you know, the other thing, and again, this is this is utterly minor compared to all these other things. You know, big fall season premieres and all these uh, reality shows and all these sitcoms and all this stuff. You're going to see that, I would imagine, uh, change to some degree. Yeah. It's going to be a very uh, strange fall. 
what reality could they produce for television that would be any more real? Exactly right. And you know one other thing as we're talking that I'm thinking of, that, that throughout the summer we were discussing at great length, there really was, I mean, you know, and you don't, no one wants this, by the way. No one is courting this. This is all horrible. There was no news this summer. So the, the, there was nothing happening this summer. Yeah. That's um, right. And now, now we're going to be on overload. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't watched CNN at 7 o'clock in the morning in a long time. Yeah. How did, did you do, somebody called you, or how did you find somebody out? Somebody called me about a quarter to seven. In fact, my phone rang five different times. I got five different phone calls. You know what, what I did, of course, the, 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 when the second plane happened and you realized what it was, I called my wife at home, waking her, and I said, you know what, I'm fine, you're fine, but you should be aware of this. And the other thing, for so many people listening who have children, I'm like, you should be aware of this, and you shouldn't turn on the TV when the baby wakes up. Yeah. Um, and then, the, uh, you know, everyone, everyone also have their personal take on it. This is my wife's birthday today. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, oh, my God. And here's the thing, though. You, you, you can keep the kids from watching this morning, but they're going to see this eventually. No, exactly right. And, and what you, do you tell your kids? You, you, I, and I, I've been sort of rehearsing that speech in my mind and when, when to give it. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a question I think we'll talk about later this afternoon. It's like, yeah. what do you tell your kids? I want to talk to kids this afternoon. I'm going to have kids call in who know about this story. And I, I want to find out what people are telling their kids, because uh, what do you tell your kids? What well, you, you know what was interesting, and I don't know how the, the head of the uh, L.A. Unified School District, uh, Roy Romer, when he spoke earlier in the day, said that, uh, and you, that you don't, there's nothing to be gained, and he apparently sent out a directive to turn off TVs in schools. There's nothing to be gained by, you know, having a second grader or a sixth grader or a ninth grader sit there all day and watch the TV. Right. But they're going to come home, and they're going to try to turn on whatever, right. cartoons, I mean, yeah. whatever. And instead, they're going to be seeing this video running over and over of a plane uh, crashing into the World Trade Center. And you know what? To, to bring this back for a second to the uh, you know, generally irrelevant world of entertainment, after a particular amount of time, people might seek refuge in it. You know what? I can't stand this anymore. I want to go to the movies. Yeah. I can't stand this anymore. I need to laugh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long that will be. Yeah, but in the meantime, I'll bet theaters will be empty. I'll bet if there were baseball games, nobody would be going. Right. I mean, uh, I can't think about anything else but this right now. I, I can't. One thing that we'll talk about tomorrow mm -hmm. is that they've got the, um, the, 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 HU, the hut levels, the homes using television. Yeah. And in Los Angeles, at around that time of the day, it's approximately 20% of the TVs in the area are turned on. Mm -hmm. We'll get that figure tomorrow. I would imagine you're almost close to 100%. It's got to be. It's got to be. And the phones. Everybody calling everybody to say, uh, did you see this? You couldn't even make a call at one point today. I, even in L.A., you couldn't do it. Right. I, uh, that, I, and, you know, the other thing people talk about, too, of course, how, you know, the Internet is everything and the web is everything. This really shows the, uh, you know, stuff like this. Television is everything. And to a slightly lesser degree, radio is everything. Yeah. Yeah. No because question about to, it. You know. You ha this is one of those, as you said on the air. I heard you say this earlier. You had, to, you have to see it. Yeah, and you have to, and you have to like be on the air somewhere. Uh, if you do this for a living, right? You have to be on the air. As 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 horrible as it must have been to to sit on that set at KTLA and watch this plane going on the World Trade Center. Uh, where else would you want to be when that happened? Would you want to be home? Would you want to be on vacation somewhere? No, you want to be here. Yeah, you know what? That's that's interesting that you say that because I had very mixed feelings about it. I was thinking uh, there were uh, some people we were talking to whose family was away on a camping trip, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I envy them. Oh, because <laughs> because they 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 hear about it with a little more distance, but at the same time, boy, I want you know it, 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 it's amazing. I guess it is the biggest event of our lifetime. Yeah. Well, Sam, uh, thanks for the time. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you. As, uh, you know, I mean, my, my God, the voice of the station. And uh, just to reiterate these things, and again, they're not important. Madonna canceled, Latin Grammys canceled, Emmys canceled, uh, probably postponed. Uh, but, you know, and studios for the most part. Disneyland closing. Studios. Knott's Berry Farm, Universal, yeah. and the L.A. County Fair all closed. Yeah. And most major shopping centers I just see now oh, really? are closed. Wow. So you can't even go out to the mall and forget about this today. Oh. Amazing. All right, Sam, Good thanks. Time. Thanks a lot. Sam Rubin, you hear him every day following Howard Stern here in Los Angeles on 97.1, the FM talk station, and he is on uh, until noon every day. And Sam uh, gave me his time today so I could come in and, and, and handle this uh, situation today. Uh, here in Los Angeles, uh, we're going to go on until 1 o'clock, and I'm going to take a lunch break and then come back and do our national show. Uh, uh, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank are going to be on from 1 until 3. 
and then I'm going to come back at 3 o'clock for those of you listening in SoCal. Seattle, I imagine B.J. Shea will be on from 1 till 3 on 100.7 The Buzz. Let's take a break. We will come back with more of your telephone calls after a six-minute break. We're going to take right here on 100.7 The Buzz and 97.1 The FM Talk Station. CBS News Update. I'm Tom Foti. New York's famed World Trade Center towers are no more. It was almost like you couldn't believe your eyes, like you were watching a, a science fiction movie, and you saw it just basically barrel through the building. You actually, you know, saw it going through, and then... In, on impact, all you saw was smoke. I witnessed Barry Green after two apparently hijacked jetliners struck first one, then the other of the 110-story towers. They were engulfed in flames and not long after collapsed, taking a huge chunk of New York's famous skyline and untold numbers of people with them. Needless to say, New York and the rest of the country are on edge. CBS News correspondent Scott Pelley. For the last several hours, there have been several flights of U.S. Air Force F-15 fighter planes flying overhead. One might presume that they are flying combat air patrol over Manhattan to make sure that no other unauthorized aircraft get anywhere close to here. And there's more. A part of the Pentagon destroyed by another attack and still burning. President Bush. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives, and to help the victims of these attacks. Much of America has come to a standstill. Stock and commodities markets closed. Sports events canceled as the nation is hit by an unprecedented wave of terror. CBS News Update, I'm Tom Fody. 97.1, the FM talk station. Hi, I'm Vernon Kopp with KLSX. In response to the increased need for blood on the East Coast due to the terrorist attacks at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, the American Red Cross Blood Services, Southern California Region, is extending hours at Southern California Blood Donor Centers to facilitate individuals who wish to donate blood. As part of a national humanitarian system of sharing blood based on patient need, American Red Cross Blood Services, Southern California Region, and other Red Cross blood centers are diverting blood to the New York City and Washington, D.C. areas in response to the terrorist attacks. To give blood, one must be 17 years of age or older, weigh at least 110 pounds, be in good health, and not at risk for HIV-AIDS. To donate blood, please call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE to make an appointment to find the donor center most convenient for you. God bless you, and God bless America. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, Earth. and freedom will be defended. Earth. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested, but make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test.
God bless. 97.1, the FM talk station, Southland Traffic. traffic. Uh, just to let you know about some closures. West LA, West Wilshire Boulevard in both directions at the Federal Building is closed. LAX, Pulvita Boulevard in both directions between West Manchester is closed. Also closed are any roads leading to LAX, north and bound and southbound. 405 Century Boulevard off-ramps are closed. 105 Freeways of Pulvita Boulevard off-ramp is closed as well. Pick up the Los Angeles Times classified with thousands of new local jobs. It's Southern California's ultimate resource in print online. Your future is here. Expedia.com has hotel rooms and vacation packages on sale. All September planning a trip to Las Vegas has never been easier. Expedia.com. Don't just travel, travel right. It's 12 o'clock on 97.1 KLSX Los Angeles. And now back to a special edition of Tom Likas live in Los Angeles. You bet. All right, it is a special edition uh, here in Los Angeles. Uh, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank will uh, do two hours. Uh, I'm uh, Tom Likas, and I'm going to stay here till 1 o'clock uh, here on the West Coast. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, uh, speculating, but I imagine in Seattle you'll be hearing B.J. Shea from 1 to 3, and in Los Angeles, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank from 1 to 3. We will do our national show today. Uh, beginning at 3 o'clock, and among the things going to do, because uh, it'll be uh, school will be out by that time, I'm going to talk to people who are parents about, like, what you told your kids, what you tell your kids, and I'm also going to talk to kids coming up later. So have your kids tune in later on, and we're going to do that, all right? And again, we're not playing around today. We're not playing around. Uh, you know the deal. Four planes today hijacked all within minutes of each other, it seems. All four crashed. Two of them crashed into the World Trade Center. One crashed into the Pentagon. One crashed outside of Pittsburgh. And uh, amazing things going on. Uh, shopping centers in Los Angeles closed. The Federal Building closed. Uh, Disneyland, Universal Studios, Knott's Berry Farm, L.A. County Fair, all closed. Uh, the Latin Grammy Awards, which were set to be held at the Forum tonight, closed. Obviously oh, closed, canceled, postponed, whatever. Uh, Emmy Awards on Sunday, canceled, postponed, whatever. We don't know. Madonna tonight at Staples Center, not happening. You know, check with your uh, ticket master or whatever, okay? But it's not happening tonight. Forget it. All right. Um, uh, all I can tell you is that uh, there is a high stage of alert for the LAPD. They are on tactical alert. Uh, we've got two shifts of officers out there right now. Anti-terrorism units of the LAPD are out there right now, and. Um, don't go near LAX. There are no flights. The FAA has canceled all flights all across America. There is no air travel at all. Don't even think about it. Stay away if you're in Los Angeles. Stay away from Sepulveda Boulevard uh, down near LAX. Stay away from Century Boulevard. Stay away from LAX. Just stay away. Don't go there. Okay. No Major League Baseball anywhere in America tonight. No ball games. If you get tickets, don't bother going. Not happening. There will be no air travel till at least noon tomorrow. You can imagine that if there is air travel tomorrow, uh, the airlines are going to be packed, the airports are going to be packed, and the security procedures are going to be tough enough to the point you're going to have to get to the airport probably a couple hours before your flight tomorrow if it takes off at all. And God knows what will happen between now and tomorrow. So uh, that's just uh, what they're saying right now. Could be noon tomorrow, could be noon a week from tomorrow. Who knows? United States of America attacked on U.S. So we've been attacked on U.S. soil for the first time. And it's scary, man. It's scary. Unbelievable. And uh, Jack says, and I, I agree with him, that I should uh, reiterate something I said earlier. You know, I, maybe you saw the movie Pearl Harbor or other movies about World War II. And people talk about Pearl Harbor and the attack on Pearl Harbor. When there was an attack on Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor was a military base uh, in Hawaii, which at the time was not even a state. Hawaii didn't become a state until 1959. So in 19, December 7, 1941, the day they live in infamy, like today's date, <laughs> we'll live in infamy, uh, ultimately, for all of us who live through this. Um, the, the fact is that Hawaii was not a state. It was only U.S. soil because it was a territory and it was a military base. And even if a military base is in a country like Germany, it's considered U.S. soil, all right? But this is the first time the mainland United States has been attacked. The first time. I mean, when's the last time the mainland United States was attacked by a, by a foreign uh, country uh, or foreign uh, sub, uh, group or a, a terrorist or whoever? By outside forces. When's, when did this happen? I mean, I guess you could say there was a terrorist attack in Oklahoma City, but that was by an American, and even so, 
Uh, that was nothing. I mean, as tragic as that was, and a couple of hundred people died, that was nothing. 55,000 people work at the World Trade Center in New York City. Hundreds of people were on these four flights, passengers, crew, whatever. Man, oh man, oh man, this is a whole different ballgame, baby. We don't even know how many casualties there are. We have no idea. So, um, let's take some calls here. And, uh, I'll give the telephone numbers, by the way. And again, if you're in Seattle, uh, take the first phone number and add 213 to the beginning and you'll get in, okay? But the phone number's for L.A. and the Valley, 520-9710, 520-9710. In Orange County, uh, 714, area code 909, all those uh, crazy area codes down there, 977-9710, 977-9710. I don't even know anybody lives anymore. Remember when you had an area code and you could tell where the call was coming from? I get these calls on my caller ID. I don't even know who's calling me anymore. I don't know what city they're in. I don't know if it's a pager. I don't know what's calling me anymore. I don't even know whose calls to avoid anymore. Out of control. 977-9710 from Orange County. And if you're a Sprint PCS customer, dial pound 971, and that gets you through to our show. That's all you have to do, okay? Let's rock. Uh, Steve, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, I've been Steve. listening to you for years, buddy. Thank you. Hey, uh, the one question that I've got is all these other airlines that have gone down in the past, They've had the uh, uh, flight information uh, uh, communication between the uh, uh, tower and the plane. You mean the black box transmission? No, no, not the black box, but they've had verbal communications, you know, been listening to what's been going on. And if four planes were hijacked, why wasn't there any maydays? I don't know. I, and do you know that there weren't? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. We saying. don't look. Nobody, I got to tell you, it is too soon to speculate. There's stuff we don't know. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm saying. Why? Because it's maybe the there were. The news people have always been on top of it and had that information within. An the hour news or two. people. I mean, you understand that, for example, CNN's New York headquarters at the World Trade Center. You got to understand, the news people are overwhelmed with reporting on stuff right now. You I can't understand. expect them to have every piece of information. You yep. can't. I mean, there could have been May Days. Who knows? I mean, uh, uh, these guys have a very hard job to do right now. You're reporting on injuries. You're reporting on terrorism. You're reporting on fires. You're reporting on plane hijackings all at the same time. And there's lots of facts we're not going to know for days and days and days. So when you watch a TV, do not believe that we know every fact that's out there to be known or that they, they can be known. They can't. I can imagine what it's like being a reporter today. It's got to be tough. It's got to be tough. Speaking of reporters, let's get uh, Terry Edwards on the air. Terry Edwards, of course, reporting from LAX. And uh, apparently a suspicious van was found at LAX. Terry, what's the deal? Yeah, we can't get confirmation of it. The uh, police just sort of herded us down to the uh, far end of the, the terminals here. We're all outside. The terminals themselves have been closed. All the passengers have long gone. But uh, we are getting uh, some, uh, some word of uh, some uh, suspicious van that uh, there's a bomb squad out. Uh, we're just waiting for something to explode or happen. Uh, all the cameras are pointed that way, but uh, we're just kind of cooling our heels out here, standing out in the middle of uh, where normally at this time of day there'd be a whole lot of traffic. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an eerie feeling being at LAX, and there aren't any, uh, aren't any planes coming and going. There aren't any buses uh, zooming around. There aren't any taxis. It's, uh, Last time it's, I remember seeing LAX like that, Terry, was during the riots. Yeah, it's a very similar situation. It, it's, it, I mean, nothing is moving. And that's uh, just not uh, not what you'd expect to find out here. Uh, it's uh, it is surreal. I mean, obviously FBI all over the place, the police all over the place. But uh, right now we're just kind of cooling on our heels, waiting for something to happen. We're we're half a mile away from where they where the van or whatever it is is. So uh, we're we're pretty far away from anything. If um, if there is an explosion, obviously you're going to hear from me. But uh, uh, right now there's just not a lot going on out here. Do we know what the airlines have done with the family members or the the loved ones of the people uh, who might have been on these flights that were coming yeah, we, to LAX? We haven't seen a lot of that. There was uh, we saw two rushes of uh, of people coming through. You know, lots of uh, lots of entourage around them. But uh, one turned out to be uh, a lady who's. Uh, uh, son was actually following, fa flying into uh, Tijuana and was supposed to connect into L.A., and she uh, lost contact with him, and she was concerned. So it wasn't even anything that was uh, immediately uh, of, of, uh, of concern here. Uh, but, no, we have not seen any of that activity. Uh, we're, uh, you know, here at the, uh, at the, uh, at the arrivals uh, section, and we, we haven't seen any of that. Uh, I know the airports, the airlines, rather, have, uh, have been trying to accommodate people as much as possible, uh, vouchers to stay over, and uh, the Salvation Army has been out here trying to uh, to lend a hand wherever they can as well. 
Wow. All right, Terry, we'll keep in touch, and uh, thanks very much. You are welcome. Terry Edwards reporting from uh, LAX, and now we have uh, down at Los Angeles City Hall, Steve Gonzalez. Uh, we've had uh, a couple of press conferences down at City Hall, haven't we, Steve? Well, there's only been one press conference. There was a, uh, probably what you might be referring to as the meeting of the Emergency Operations Board that just convened about a half hour ago. Mm -hmm. It's a... Uh, it's a board, if you will, of all of the department heads of L.A. County. Anybody who's anybody that runs anything was here, from the Department of Transportation to the L.A. Zoo to the Department of Aging, to verify that Meals on Wheels is still uh, still working. They said all non-essential personnel have been sent home and that everything is running as well as can be expected under the circumstances. As you said a little while ago, the uh, LAPD is still on tactical alert. They said they will be until further notice. LAX and the L.A. Harbor still closed as a precautionary measure. They said they've got ships and the Coast Guard patrolling the harbor, uh, looking for any suspicious activity. The acting mayor, Alex Padilla, reminded everybody to remain calm. He said everybody needs to be patient, cooperate with the police, and uh, they said change does bring about the best in everybody and helps us be better prepared for the next, uh, next uh, situation or the next catastrophe. He gave out this phone number also for anybody. The LAPD wanted everybody to have this number. If you have any questions, call 1-888-356-356. 4661. That's the uh, uh, phone number to get any emergency update information. Now, uh, Alex Padilla, uh, only recently in his position uh, with the city council, is the acting mayor. Uh, did we hear that uh, the mayor uh, is in Washington, D.C.? He's in Washington, D.C. right now. He's been fully informed about what's been going on. He's uh, updated, and uh, they couldn't verify the fact that all planes, as you mentioned earlier, are grounded. Maybe that's the reason he couldn't get back. They didn't really say, but they said he'd be back uh, possibly tonight or tomorrow, but he would be back, and he's uh, up abreast of every single thing that goes on here in Los Angeles. Alex Padilla, the acting mayor, said that uh, they talk uh, frequently, like several times an hour. Wow. All right. Uh, very good, and uh, uh, I thank you very much, Steve. We're going to check in with you again at City Hall. We appreciate it. You bet. There goes Steve Gonzalez, who is uh, reporting from City Hall for us. And, uh, all right, uh, we're getting everything together here. We're keeping it together as much as we can. And I'm looking at video from New York City, live video. And it looks, and for those of you who lived through the riots in SoCal in 1992, uh, the skies over Manhattan look very much like uh, downtown Los Angeles did during the riots. We had all those fires going on. There is a, 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 a layer of smoke so thick that it looks like like nuclear winter it looks dark out there and the last time i experienced anything like that was during the riots in 1992 i was on uh, the golden state freeway heading northbound from downtown and uh, it, w it was like nighttime during the day it was the most amazing thing i'd ever seen and i'm seeing that on tv now in new york city it is truly amazing fighter jets flying over manhattan warships in new york harbor this is not a game this is not a movie this is reality folks blows me away Blows me away. Let's take some calls here. Let's say hi here to uh, Lou on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I think we're going to get some answers a lot faster if we focus on the fourth plane crash. It crashed in a, a town called Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I just looked that up on, my, on the Internet. I'm originally from that area. And it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere, so it's likely that it didn't crash in any towns or houses or anything like that. Yeah. I have a feeling they're going to find that black box pretty quick. Yeah, and then uh, whether it'll tell us anything, we don't even know. Exactly. I, I mean, imagine if the pilot was, like the, the, one of the people speculated here, and I, I happen to think that uh, it certainly sounds plausible that uh, we don't know anything and we may never know anything, but what if these pilots were employed by the airlines who mm -hmm. did this and uh, uh, maybe they weren't saying anything uh, so that it wouldn't be recorded in the black box? I mean, you never know what we're going to get from that black box. You don't know. That's true. So it's, you know, it's creepy. The whole thing is creepy. Yeah, I, I have a feeling once we find out who did it, we might be surprised. I mean, who knows, because everyone's blaming, oh, it's a foreign country. It could be domestic as well, which, you know, everyone blamed everyone a uh, foreign country during the Timothy McVeigh thing. And there were countries that took responsibility for it uh -huh. who were obviously lying. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800, I'm sorry, uh, the 520-9710. We're not using the 800 number for uh, this particular broadcast because everything's different. There's no music. There's no nothing. It's just raw show here, folks. 520-9710 from L.A. in the Valley. 520-9710. If you're in Seattle, just add a 213 uh, to 520-9710. Uh, Orange County, 977-9710. And Sprint PCS Pound, 971. This is Chris on a cell phone. Chris, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. 
Hey, Tom. Hi, Chris. The worst thing I think that we could do uh, is to stop living our lives. I think uh, I'm seeing everybody shutting down all around me. I uh, just went to work uh, this morning. I work for a really big entertainment company, and I was told we're not working today. Yeah, I just I saw on TV believe. that the major movie studios have halted production yeah. uh, today. And of course, I, I you got to imagine. Now, let, let's talk about that for a second, okay? Uh, if you're an actor, you got to imagine that if I, I know how deeply affected I am by this. Could you really do a good job today? Uh, we've had our arm ripped off today, but we can't have our heart stop pumping. We got to keep on living our lives. Uh, th this uh, we're destroying the economy if we if the entire country just shuts down. Well, I understand uh, where you're coming from, but I also know that we're I, human. I understand. I understand that we've that uh, this is the most the biggest tragedy that I have ever seen uh, in my lifetime. That most people have seen in their lifetime. It's terrible. I was shaken when I saw the twin towers coming down. I could not believe my eyes. I, but the first thought I had was, how are people going to start reacting to this? My sister has gone out and uh, removed her uh, funds from the bank uh, this morning, and uh, she's refusing to go to work today. She, she uh, works in a job that, where she pampers uh, rich people, and she's telling me today that she just can't stand, she's disgusted by the decadence and uh, can't, uh, can't stand the thought of working uh, today. I think, uh, I think that's stupid. Those people that are, uh, I know, as, as ironic as it sounds, those people that are continuing to live their lives and keep the uh, economy going are, uh, they're, they're, they're helping the country. Well, they are, but again, I can understand why somebody would be uh, so deeply affected by this that they wouldn't be able to come to work. I mean, this is the essence of what I do. I mean, much as we kid around on the radio, I've been in radio my whole life. And any day something big has happened. I was on the air the day of the riots in Los Angeles, the day of the Rodney King decision, uh, the the Reginald Denny beating. I was on the air for that. I was on the other day the uh, Challenger blew up. I was on the air. Every, every You name any event, and I was on the air. And no matter what we were doing, no matter what we were kidding around about, uh, suddenly, you know, you shift into this mode where this is the only thing you can think about. It's the only thing you can do. This is the only place I could be. I could not sit home and not work today. But I can understand why the average person who does the average job would have a very hard time getting motivated or to be able to keep their mind on their work. I can understand why that would be hard for somebody. This is just a, a terrible, terrible thing. And it's, I mean, can you imagine December 7th, 1941, you know, the day that we live in infamy and bombing of Pearl Harbor? Can you imagine people are saying, well, I'm just going to go to work. Ah, so what? Pearl Harbor. Ah, big deal. I'm gonna go. you know, it, it, it affects you. We're human. We are. Steve Futterman. We haven't talked to Steve in a long time. Stevie. Hello, Tom. Stevie Futterman calling in from LAX. Steve. At Los Angeles International, Tom, uh, where obviously uh, things are basically shut down, you have never seen LAX like it is today, really a ghost town. In fact, uh, when I got in there this morning, uh, you were able to uh, bring your car, and they hadn't blocked the entranceways for automobiles, even though they had uh, blocked up the terminals. But now you can't even drive your car inside there. So uh, uh, the airport is uh, completely shut down right now. Uh, there may be a plane or two still coming into LAX, although they're trying to divert those flights to maybe Ontario, California, or uh, Long Beach. But if they come in, they'll they'll take the passengers to a, uh, another area, put them through customs, and then take them to meet their uh, friends and relatives at a parking lot. They won't even let the people who are coming to greet uh, passengers into LAX right now. So you can't even, like, if you, if you drove your car to the airport, you're parked at the airport, you can't even get your own car. No, I mean, you won't even be able to go into that uh, that uh, roadway which circles around the airport. That's blocked off completely now. Unbelievable. They have dogs that are going around. We've seen some examples. I'm, I don't know for sure because we just can't, can't get confirmation, but we have seen some FBI agents. We have seen some uh, sniffing dogs, we assume bomb-sniffing dogs, going around checking. Well, it looks like they're checking some of the planes. Now, these are often and probably just precautionary measures that are being taken. It's not to suggest that they have any words that are that there's a bomb on board a plane, but uh, certainly every precaution is being taken. Wow. Now, um, I just got this information about that yeah. Flight 11. Have you yes. seen this? Tell me. Flight 11, American Airlines Flight 11, which uh, left the Logan Airport, was heading for LAX. Uh, we have a report here that two flight attendants were stabbed 
and the perpetrators just rushed the cockpit, and another flight attendant called operations. I don't know how we know this. I don't know if the well, black box came out or what, but they, they, that's what they're saying. Well, we have heard, and again, you know, you tell me, you're seeing the wire services. Have you heard these reports of people making uh, cell phone calls from the plane? Steve, I just uh, was uh, given the information. This came from uh, uh, a reporter on ABC. He was reporting from Seattle. Uh, and uh, apparently the flight attendant had managed to call operations and tell them this information. That's how it got out. Yeah, we have been hearing reports that some people, I don't know if they were stewardesses or just passengers, and again, this is what we're hearing. I'm not trying to say this is, uh, I know this for a fact, and uh, so if you hear this from me, don't, don't repeat it necessarily as a fact, but we've been hearing rumors that there might have been some people who locked themselves in the bathrooms and were placing 911 calls or just placing calls on their cell phones to tell people what was taking place. Wow. Wow, they always tell you to turn off that cell phone, but I'll tell you what, if something like that was happening, I ain't turning off the cell phone. Man, I mean, it's, it's, Tom, it's just almost, well, it is surrealistic. Uh, when you see the, the, the two World Trade Center buildings, which we all know so well in our minds, just sort of evaporated, it reminded me of, you know, the, the, the movie Independence Day where suddenly the White House uh, disappears. But this was real. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at a shot now on ABC and uh, the New York skyline. It looks so strange. The towers are missing. They're just gone. Yeah. I mean, it, and of course, most of us, I'm sure you've been there. I've been there. I mean, if you go to New York, that's one of the places you go to, these famous twin towers. And, uh, I mean, it was just shocking. I happened to be watching TV when they suddenly uh, went down. I don't know what they're saying now, whether it was structural damage. It looked to me, my non-expert instinct was there was a secondary bomb maybe on board these planes that crashed into the building, and then the, the secondary bombs exploded and the buildings just collapsed. But uh, just a, an eerie sight. An, a, a way eerie sight. Uh, a day we will never forget. No, I, I agree. Uh, people are calling. I talked to a couple people old enough, and there aren't that many around these days, old enough to remember Pearl Harbor, uh -huh. and they were saying uh, to them this, you know, it's, it's the question that's going around today. This is a modern fit Pearl Harbor. But these people said that they felt, in fact, uh, they looked through Pearl Harbor, and they do feel that this uh, uh, has certain reminders of that day, how they felt that day in 1941. Yeah, yeah. Steve, thank you very much. Great to talk to you again. Always great talking to you. I, I wish it was happier circumstances, Tom, and, uh, you know, any more updates, just give me a ring. Call me anytime. We'll talk to you again. Okay. Thank you. Steve Futterman reporting from LAX. Steve has been on our show many times over the years, and we'll have him again uh, later in the day. Uh, I'll be returning, by the way, uh, at 3 o'clock. I'll be here till 1 o'clock. We'll take a little break and come back in. We have the national show from 3 to 7, and uh, we go 3 to 8 in Los Angeles, 3 to 7 in Seattle, and... Oh, Conway and Steckler will start at 7 tonight. Good. 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 Very good. Conway and Steckler at 7 tonight. Good. Okay, so I'm 3 to 7. Conway and Steckler at 7 in Los Angeles. And uh, on the buzz, I don't know. Call the buzz. Ask him. I have no idea. Got the program director of 97.1 here. He's telling me. He's making those programming decisions on the fly. He's telling me what's going on. The buzz, I don't even know. They're just kind of listening in. That's the deal. All right. Your calls. We got so many. Leah. On a cell phone, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? All right, Leah. Um, number one, um, I'm, I've been listening to your show for a couple of hours, and I really appreciate the kind of journalism that you're demonstrating today. Um, keeping the racism out of the show is a great choice, and it's great to get just the facts. Number two, I heard your question, when was the last time that U.S. soldiers were on, um, or I'm sorry, foreign soldiers were on U.S. soil, and it was 1812 when the British um, invaded and burned the White House. So it's been almost 200 years wow. since we had foreign soldiers on our soil. And, um, you know, part of the reason that I enjoy being an American, I really, I have a lot of faith in this country, especially when you chalk up her pros and cons to others. And, um, you know, what happened today terrified me because my first thought was, well, when are they coming to the West Coast? And as you know, I live in Seattle, so that's scary. And we've got Bremerton right here, which is a large naval base. And obviously that would be a next target after seeing that they attacked the Pentagon. So, um, but you know, I thought about it. And one thing that the U.S. has always done is administer swift justice. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe a small reenactment of the Nuremberg trials, you know, after World War II. And, um, you know, I hope these people have a loaded shotgun in their mouths because, you know, it would be a lot less painful for them to do that than to wait for us to track them down. And, um, you know, my heart goes out to all the family and friends. I've got a friend that, that's going to school in New York, and the first thing I did was call her. She's my best friend, like a sister. And it's just, 
it's a horrible thing, but, um, you know, thank God it's America that is, because it'll be dealt with right, and thank God for Colin Powell. Thank God he's in the White, White House, because he's somebody that we can all really depend on. So uh, I just kind of wanted to call you, and, you know, thank you for uh, your show today. It's really been informative. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Leah. You're welcome. Appreciate Bye. the call. I see now that 600 people are known to be in New York City hospitals. And uh, I'll bet it's more than that, but that's what they know about. 600 people in New York City hospitals as a result of everything that happened. Uh, God only knows how many people are dead. We don't know and we may never know. But it's, it's a lot. A lot of people. Totally amazing. Uh, let's say hello here to uh, Jeremy on a cell phone. You're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? All right, Jeremy. Uh, I just wanted to call you to see, uh, granted, we find out uh, who's done this. Do you think Bush has what it takes to take us to the next step? I don't know. I guess this is how you find out, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's a good test for him this year. I don't want any good tests. You know what? I don't want the president being tested like this. Don't okay. like it. Don't want it to happen. We, you know, we've been very, very lucky over the years. I mean, uh, Bill Clinton didn't have a test like that. George uh, W. Bush uh, is being tested in a way that his father was never tested. So uh, mm -hmm. who knows? Okay. But uh, I, yeah, we're going to find uh, You know what? We're all going to find out together. You know, I know. And uh, you know what? I'm kind of afraid of that at the same time, Tom, to be honest with you. Well, uh, if there's one good side to the way George W. Bush runs the, uh, the White House, it, I don't think he has any responsibility for anything. Are they going to have Dick Cheney and Colin Powell running everything? And he's just going to, you know, he's going to get coffee. Let's hope so. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jeremy. Here is Matt with Tom Likas. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Okay. Hey, uh, just real quickly, just wanted to say that uh, a lot of people are wondering why the uh, CIA and the FBI haven't been able to put a lid on this thing at all. And I think a lot of it has got to do with uh, them putting an extreme amount of resources into the drug interdiction effort and concentrating on that because they can actually get something physical out of that so they can show the news reporters that, uh, that they're doing something rather than something like Osama bin Laden who's been rather a ghost to them that they can't seem to uh, find or anything like that. And if it is bin Laden, I think uh, just carpet bombing a country would be a big mistake because more than likely he's sitting in a place that we would never bomb, Israel, England, you know, that he's been sm smuggled in there and, uh, and just kind of hanging loose there for a while until things cool out. Yeah, well, um, I'm, I'm seeing now on TV, now they're saying there are 1,500 walking wounded in New York that have been evacuated to the area around the Statue of Liberty. Thank it's God. unbelievable. I mean, this is just amazing. Mm. And as someone who's flown for a good number of years, I used to fly 50% of the time for the company I used to be with. Um, it's extremely difficult unless you are able to get into that cockpit uh, just before they start to actually taxi out because they they button up that uh, bulkhead rather quickly as soon as they uh, as soon as they start to crank up the engines. And so they either had to have some type of plastic explosive, and obviously I'm speculating, but uh, or they forced their way in right quick and then taxied it out and took the plane off because it's obvious they could they could fly these birds. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Tom thank thanks you. A lot. Appreciate the call. All right, coming up on twelve thirty. Here we are on ninety seven point one, the FM talk station, KLSX in Los Angeles, one hundred point seven, the Buzz KQBZ in Seattle. Uh, my name is Tom Likas, and uh, normally in LA you'd be hearing uh, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. Now and in uh, Seattle you would be hearing BJ Shea. But I am here right now because we have this uh, uh, um, the most amazing story of our lifetime. Um, I've covered a lot of these, and a lot of times I've had to shift out of the um, party mode to to do these serious shows, and so uh, they call me in to do it. That's what I'm doing. I will take a couple of hours off between 1 and 3, and I will come back between 3 and 7 and do the regular national show. And uh, again, today, it's not a party atmosphere around here or just about anywhere. Uh, we take this very seriously. Uh, a little later on, we will ask you, if you're a parent, to call in and tell us what you're telling your kids about this. And uh, more importantly, we're going to talk to your kids later on. So have them listening when they come home from school later, because uh, we're going to talk to kids uh, this afternoon. We're going to do that. Uh, coming up later on. Uh, anyway, all right, there's the deal. All right, now we know what's on the buzz. BJ Shea at 1 o'clock. I'll be from 3 to 7. And then Lionel at 7. Okay, that's your schedule. There you go. Woof. All right, uh, more calls here. Our telephone numbers, of course, if you're in Seattle, just add 213 to the first number, 520-9710 from L.A. in the Valley, 520-9710. Orange County, 977-9710. And if you're a Sprint PCS customer, pound 971 uh, gets you right in. Brian, on a cell phone, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I was calling, listening to you all morning, and one of the thoughts I had was during the first Bushes, uh, 
presidency, he got the coalition against uh, Saddam Hussein, where he had all the pres- all the countries agreeing that what he was doing was wrong. I'm hoping terrorists right now are living in other states, other countries, you know, immune to any attack because they're kind of just hiding there in Afghanistan and Pakistan and so forth. It'd be nice if the UN and all the countries agreed any nation harboring a known terrorist is going to then be guilty as that terrorist. So but I you realize that we out. have known terrorists in this country? <laughs> yes. So what are you yeah. going to do, bomb ourselves? Well, not bomb ourselves. I'm not saying we should be covered bombing people. I'm saying terrorists, as we say right now, you know, the IRA, the Islamic, the whole gauntlet of terrorism just needs to stop. And the only way they'll ever stop is if they don't have a home to go to. I mean, if you try to, you know, if you're a terrorist, you're going to go somewhere. If you're not allowed in, where are you going to go? And if Libya is not going to let you in, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? I mean, eventually. Right, but, I mean, if these guys get on planes, they can hide out in countries. I mean, uh, you're assuming that all these countries, you're assuming that all these countries know they've got terrorists there. You're assuming that they are complicit with these terrorists. And in reality, in some cases that may be true. And in other cases, there may be countries harboring terrorists because they got lousy security, because they don't know how to do it. I mean, who knows? Right, but when it's known after the... Obviously, nothing's going to happen tomorrow. When we track down the corporate, you know, the people that are behind this, which eventually will come out, if that country still houses them, they're as guilty as a terrorist. They have to acknowledge the world's changed today. It, you know, this could have happened into London. It could have been the Eiffel Tower could have blown up today. I mean, we all have to react the same way. I, you know what? I'm not worried about the Eiffel Tower. You know what I'd be worried about? Nuclear power plants, sure. nuclear weapons that are stored places. That's what I'd be worried about. Right. We're pretty but lucky point, it wasn't that. Right. My point was they're hitting national landmarks. And, I mean, the West Coast, what are you thinking about here? I mean, is it the, are they going to hit the Gold Gate Bridge to make a point, or what are they going to do? Who knows? The now, your, yeah. guess, your guess is as good as mine, pal. I'll tell you what. Uh, John, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going? Okay. Uh, well, I was just listening to that last call, and I think you're right. You know, the, the terrorism, uh, you know, it could be domestic and it can be foreign. And I think that we need to, to start a, a zero tolerance towards these terrorists. And I think that, you know, we have these, these satellites up there that can, that can see a fly on a horse's butt. And uh, I think that we need to start monitoring them. And uh, we know they're there. We know where bin Laden, you know, we know where he's operating. And, and we know that these companies are these, uh, these countries are uh, are harboring them, and I think that that is time we go in there and and get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my my, my uh, the reason why I was calling is is that uh, is that if you notice that all those planes, these guys uh, these guys were terrorists that that uh, instead of strapping bombs to their chest and going in there and committing suicide and blowing everything up, they took a plane uh, that were going uh, as full as they could be, you know, going from L. A. to uh, to uh, to Dulles, and they were going completely across country, and they were completely full of fuel, and uh, and and they and they and they they used it as a bomb, and there was, sounds like there was more than one of them. And he, uh, we we really don't know any of that stuff. I mean, you, this is all oh, speculation sure. this, this on your all, part. This is all my theory, sure. Yeah, I know, but I mean, again, I just have to point out to people: we don't know how this happened. We don't. We no. don't know anything. We don't know Jack. We, no, we don't. No. We, we're just here, like speculating about stuff. And you know what? I don't even want to do that. I'd rather wait till the the information comes in, because you know we could sit here all day long. Well, it could have been uh, three guys. It could have been six sure, guys. Sure. Could have been a bunch. Of, you know, it could have been anything. I don't know. Yeah, but but I mean, it's it's it, it, it's time for this to stop. This should we should use this as an as an eye opener and realize that the, that 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 Russia and China aren't the threat. I mean, these are the people that will use the weapons that they get. And these are the people that will that that don't care about human life. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, I, clearly they didn't. There are people who didn't care about their own. Yeah, obviously. Uh, they, the yeah, the, the point perpetrators, they, they, you know. as they say in New York City, the point perpetrators went, went down on that plane. They committed suicide. And you say, what you know? What what, what if these are domestic people? Well, you know, the, the, the terrorists so far that have that have uh, been domestic that have bombed the U.S. haven't blown themselves up. You know, there's not too many uh, militia groups or terrorist organizations in the U.S. that we know of that uh, consider it an honor to blow themselves up along with other people. Yeah, but again, it, you know, it is not a person's country of origin that determines that. It's their religion. It's you sure. And, and so a person of a particular religion can live in any country. Sure. And in our country, we've got more diversity than most countries. Sure, and I agree. So I, I agree that yeah. it's not just people in the Middle East that, 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 are, uh, that are the source of this problem. Your I mean, next-door neighbor could be, could be a terrorist, and way. you wouldn't know it. A terrorist is a terrorist, you know, and, and it doesn't matter if they're living in, uh, you know, 
Kennebunkport, Maine, or if they're in, uh, you know, the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to move on. John, thank you. Let's continue with your telephone calls here. It's John, another John. Uh, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. A couple of things. First of all, I'm re personally, I'm really surprised that this hasn't happened earlier in the history of the United States, but the reason I was really calling was mostly to respond to this one guy who was talking about go on and move on with your life. What happened today, this is, these are more than just national landmarks. And I don't think any of us, including professional news reporters, realize the full implication of what and the ramifications of what this means. I mean, we're talking about the World Trade Center. There's headquarters of some of the companies that control commerce, that control the world, that control trade with other. The implications are just so amazing. And just another like side point, like you know, they got one guy was talking about how they button up the cockpit. I yeah. fly a lot, and. Anybody who wants to get into a cockpit could easily strong arm their way in, including myself. I'm like a small guy, but I mean, these are not really secure, like Brinks truck type doors. They're, oh, they've got those uh, panels that look like the uh, uh, they look like the room dividers they use on the plane between first class and, and coach. That's exactly right. You could just like knock your way right through there, but. In the, in, I don't know, man. It's just it's. You look at the World Trade Center. You see that building coming down. And this is especially to the guy who's talking about just live your life. Within those four seconds, tens of thousands of at, probably at least 10,000 people, like, like a candle that fast, their lives, the lives of their loved ones, people that they know, and just so much act has happened that to, I don't think anybody really understands the true ramifications and the true implications. It's, just, it's so profound. It's like I can hardly even think straight much less go to work yeah yeah i agree with you I mean, how can you not watch this and be deeply profoundly affected by it oh man this i'm just i am just i'm shocked i just i just it's just just amazing just just really amazing but the one guy who's talking about live your life i think what he needs to do is to, is to live his life a little bit by like being a little more philosophical and like actually taking consideration about what this me every time usually when there's a disaster i move on with i am a business owner i move on with my business i say i can't let it affect me but this is something the magnitude is so outrageous that that and i don't even i don't even get it but i it's just so the magnitude is yeah. so intense that this is not a go live your life type of event in my opinion no uh, no uh, but i'll tell you what i can Go ahead and live my life because this is what I do, okay? But I can imagine that if you just go in and you push a pencil or you dig holes or you, you know, lift boxes or drive trucks or whatever you do, it's got to be hard to watch this stuff on TV. Uh, if you think about the families who are affected, the children who are affected, when you think about uh, uh, the loved ones who are affected, when you think about all of the, 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 the people who are in pain in hospitals, how can you not be affected by it? How can you not? Yeah, I can't. I mean, you know, I, 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 I can't. And, and even a person like you, I mean, you know, this is your business. But, I mean, clearly, I mean, and you're living your life. But the way that uh, still, it's, I mean, I mean, what's happening with some, some, some studio, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there's just, just there's so many different angles that you could look at that, that it actually it just it, it all starts hitting my brain at the same time, and I become kind of speechless about it. Yeah, I know how you feel, John. I uh, thank you for the call. Let's go to Rosie. Uh, Rosie, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hi. Hi. I just have a comment. I just think that, you know, people need to stop talking so much trash about our president. I think if people stop talking so much trash about our president, people might think that he actually had a spine. Well, I mean, we're going to find out if he has a spine now. Uh, the thing with a president, I don't care if it's this president or any president, you want him to have a spine, but you don't want him to have so much of a spine that he goes out and starts bombing anything and anybody that he sees. Yeah, but I, feel, I just feel like we're, we're breaking him down to, uh, in other people's eyes because, I mean, we don't even believe in him. You know, this well, is our country. We should stand united. One thing you're going to find in a situation like this, like we had uh, during the Persian Gulf War, is that people are just naturally going to start backing the president and, they, and they, hoping that he'll do the right thing. I mean, during the Persian Gulf War, George W. Bush's father, George Bush, was the president, and he had a 91% approval rating. 91%. No president has ever had 91% approval. But uh, that's what happened. So what you're saying is a foregone conclusion. People will back the president. Uh, but we have to hope that he knows what to do. Do we have confidence that he knows what to do? Some of us do. 
But see, that's what I mean right Some there. of us I mean, don't. Like, do we I, to, I don't. We shouldn't even say that. Like, well, well, if you, do, well, well I'm, you should I'm tell the truth. I didn't I, vote for him, but I just think, you know, it's kind of outrageous. I don't, you know, I, I personally, I don't have confidence. I hope he does the right thing. Believe me. Yeah, and, so do I. I but, we you know, need him to do the right thing, and I hope he does the right thing. I've never been convinced the guy's very smart. If, 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 maybe I'll be proven wrong, and he's the most brilliant guy we've ever known. I don't know. I hope he does the right thing. I, he is the president. I hope he does the right thing. But, I, I, but to say I'm confident he'll do the right thing would be wrong. It would be lying. Yeah, I'm not would, confident. But I just think, you know, we should, I don't know, unite, you know. That's what it should be about. Well, not. believe me, the president's going to get a lot of support. Watch. I hope so. <laughs> okay, Rosie. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. This is Larry on a cell phone. Larry, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hey, Tom, I'm just wondering if anybody uh, has proffered any theories about domestic terrorism on this thing. Proffered any theories on domestic terrorism, meaning that it might be uh, domestic terrorists? Yeah, like, you know, some crazy right-wing maniacs trying to get some attention and whatever. Because I, I have family in there, and uh, a lot of them are MIA at the moment that were working in, you know, in the World Trade you Center. You have family that were working in the World Trade Center, do you? Yeah. Wow. And, and you uh, haven't been able to get in touch with them? Nah, not anybody. I mean, I have I have family that live, um, you know, live, live down south, like in Florida. That's where my father is, and they've been calling me. And um, I'm. it's looking like I'm just getting a car tonight and driving in New York and see if I can uh, locate any of them. Yeah, you're not going to get into Manhattan, it looks like. Uh, all the well, bridges. I understand. You know. No, I know, but I can get in. You know, I can get in if I hit Jersey. I can probably get in somehow. Wow. You know, I'm going to figure it out. It's like a 48-hour drive. If I leave, I'm probably leaving in a couple hours. I'll I got to tell you, Larry, I, I know you want to do that, and I understand. You're probably better off staying here and waiting to hear from somebody because you're not going to get near Manhattan. You're just not going to. You're well, not going to get in. Probably not. They're throwing people out. They're not bringing people into Manhattan right now. Yeah, but it's family, you know. It's immediate family, and nobody can locate them. So I'm sure that they're setting up something for families that that can, uh, you know, see if there's any casualties involved. Now, if I were you, I'd make a couple of phone calls if you can get a call through, uh, and yeah, find out before you take that too. kind of trip. That's another thing too. It's getting really. It's it's like going next to impossible to get anything, even to Long Island, because like a lot of the a lot of the phones go through Manhattan, and a lot of them are all disrupted. Yeah, so it's really bad. I just hope. You know, I'm just hoping it's not some some domestic maniacs that that just decided, hey, let's do this, because it seems it seems like there's too many airports and too many planes involved for it to not be an inside kind of job. You know. Well, uh, you know, so again, somebody has speculated that, and I certainly think it's possible, but we don't know, and uh, so I must caution everybody to remember we don't know anything about this except the flight numbers and where the flights were supposed to go, how many people were on board, and where the planes crashed. That's all we know. Everything else is your pipe dreams here, okay? And I, you know, I. Good luck to you. I hope you find your family members. It's got to be hard. That, that you'd want to get in a car and drive 48 hours nonstop to New York City to try to find your family. I know it must be tough on you. I understand. Let's take some more calls here. We got a lot of people calling in. It just won't stop. Uh, Carolyn, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, I was just calling with regards to a young man who called a while back. Um, I think he had just had a caller, John, who mentioned, who said we should just get on with our lives if he worked at an entertainment right. studio. I, as well, work at an entertainment studio and was sent home. I was appalled when I walked into work that I saw people standing in line to even go into an amusement park. Uh, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to just go in, ride rides, run around with fuzzy little characters, and celebrate life? I don't well, understand also, I, it's my guess... That guy was an idiot. It's my guess. There are people who didn't know what happened today. That's you know, true. A lot of people I know don't watch the news. They don't uh, turn on the radio in the morning to hear news. That's they true. turn on to hear music, or they turn on to hear, uh, you know, Howard Stern or whatever, which is great, you know. But That's actually how I found out. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but guess what? Uh, earlier in the day, uh, Howard Stern was not talking about this. He didn't know about it. I mean, we were all finding out about it as time went on. Oh, and I'll forgive the people standing in line, but this idiot who's calling in, oh, we should just go on with our lives. If he was in front of my face, I'd hit him. That's all I have to say. Thank okay. you, Carolyn. And okay. by the way, I should point out that we've been told that Universal Studios is closed today. It's closed. It is not open. Here's another story that just came in. As I told you, it's kind of ragged here, but he's just coming in and out. This is from Shanksville, Pennsylvania. A United Airlines jetliner crashed Tuesday morning in western Pennsylvania, the airline said. 
Minutes earlier, a man who said he was a passenger on the plane told an emergency dispatcher in a cell phone call, we are being hijacked, we are being hijacked. United said 45 people were aboard Flight 93 from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco. The fate of the passengers not immediately announced. The Boeing 757 crashed north of Somerset County Airport, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh, following terrorism attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. The crash was one of four reported Tuesday by United and American Airlines. Two crashed into the World Trade Center. One hit the Pentagon in Washington. In Pennsylvania, an emergency, dis emergency dispatcher received a cell phone call at 9.58 a.m., that's 9.58 a.m. Eastern Time, from a man who said he was a passenger locked in a bathroom aboard United Flight 93. According to service uh, dispatch uh, supervisor Glenn Kramer in neighboring Westmoreland County, the man repeatedly told officials the call was not a hoax. He was uh, quoted as saying, we are being hijacked, we are being hijacked. The man told dispatchers the plane was going down. He heard some sort of explosion and saw white smoke coming from the plane. And then he, the person said we lost contact with him. Wow. Amazing stuff. And, like, these stories are going to be coming out, like, every, uh, every 20 minutes. It's going to be another story. More information. And uh, th 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 get ready, folks. This is the next six months of your life. That's what it's going to be like. Wow. Let's say hi here to uh, Tim on a cell phone. Tim, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hi, right, Tim. Hey, uh, I, I just wanted to say I. this is obviously something that's hitting really close to home to everybody all across the country but I, I i listen to your show all the time and i and i like your topics but i i'm I, i'm really glad the way you yourself uh in the media are handling this trying to keep it you know under control i mean it, it's 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 a very sad thing but it's also very sickening how a lot of the media just the slightest thing happens and they have to sensationalize it you know just to pull in ratings and pull in people and 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 i think more people in the media need to kind of take your approach where wait for the facts, wait for everything to come in, and then let the powers that, that be do what their job is. And, and Well, not I might have more. Uh, don't make any mistake about it. it. Just because I don't have an opinion today uh, doesn't mean I won't have an opinion when all the facts are in. But the right. reason I'm not coming on the air and saying, hey, let's bomb the Middle East is because I don't know who did this. I don't know how they did it. I don't know any of the facts. And I'd be a complete moron to say, let's just go out bombing stuff. And you're going to hear that on talk radio, man. Every one of these right-wing redneck lunatics who does a show is going to be on calling for the head of somebody before we even know who did it. That's what happened during the Timothy McVeigh situation. They were saying, let's go bomb the Middle East. And the guy who bombed the place was living in Oklahoma City. Well, that's, that's exactly my point is, is the approach you're taking on it. Because hopefully, as a country, we won't fall into what some of these other Middle Eastern countries, whether they had anything to do with this or not, you know, it's, you know, it's somebody bombs somebody and then they panic and then they're bombing back and forth. And, and, and I, I think who we are as Americans and being the United States, I think we need to, you know, pull together a, as a country and, and assess the situation and then let the government do what they have to do and support them and, and back them. And, uh, you know, just kind of come together and not 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 pull ourselves apart on it because I I just whenever you, there's all these troubles in all these countries around the world, which is sad. I mean, it, it's horrible that it happens, but I I think as a country, I I think as a whole, we are better than you know a, a, a lot of other countries that that were a little more united, you know, with each other and and uh, and I think once once the facts come out, I think the right steps will be taken to bring as many or or, or to bring what can be brought to justice, you know, as close as possible. Yeah, I hope that'll happen, Tim. Thank you. Uh, Sean, you're on with Tom Likas. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Okay, Sean. Um, I just want to say something about the, the person, the young lady that called about the president, saying that we should stand behind him and whatnot. I didn't vote for him either, but I personally think that he has a cabinet to make a lot of decisions for him and whatnot, so he's going to go with the majority as far as what they want to do. And uh, um, trying to find out who's responsible person or persons responsible for all this is just going to take probably quite some time, like you were saying. It may never happen. That's, that's the thing people have to remember. We may never know who did this. And by the way, uh, the FBI says no one has taken responsibility. So any reports that we've reported earlier about some Palestinian organization uh, that, and these reports have been out there, not true. The FBI says no one has taken responsibility for these uh, acts. No one as of yet, yeah, but you never know as far as Oh, they, they, uh, you never know, but earlier there was a report that somebody had. 
It's not yeah, true. I heard that earlier, too. I've been listening to your show all morning, and I heard that, that someone did, too. But whoever did it hit home, and hit home for a reason. I mean, we're in L.A. I'm in Orange County, and I felt like this morning, I felt like I hit by a Mack truck, and yeah. we're 3,000 miles away. Yeah. And it's 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 tough to swallow. It's tough to swallow that we're that vulnerable, and apparently we are. Yep, I think you're right about that, Sean. I, I want to get one more uh, uh, hit with Terry Edwards in here at, out at LAX. And, uh, uh, Terry, uh, what happened with that? Uh, they, there was a report of a possible bomb. What's the, what's the deal? Yeah, Tom, we got the all clear on that. So apparently the bomb squad went down, checked out the situation, uh, and uh, it was all clear. I guess it was a, uh, an unmarked car or something that was a bit suspicious about it. I guess there was some sort of anti-American writing on the car or something about the car that that tipped them off, but it turned out to be all clear. And we're, uh, we're good down here, and that saves me that explanation with my insurance company, why my car didn't make it back from work today. Oh, very good, very good, so okay. I'm happy about that. And, uh, no, overall, it's, uh, it's, it's really quiet down here. I mean, uh, now that that excitement is over, it's, uh, uh, it is completely a wasteland here at, at LAX. I mean, now that the media is leaving, there's absolutely nobody here. Wow, how eerie that is. It is strange. It's uh, like I said. It's just uh, you know you're so used to such a high level decibel level here between the buses and the planes that to have it quiet is uh, uh, is surreal. Terry, thank you, and we'll be checking with you again later. Thank you very All much. Right, Tom. All right, there's Terry Edwards out at LAX, and uh, that's it for me for now. I'm going to come back at three, uh, from three until seven. Uh, so here in LA, uh, you'll have Frosty, Hottie, and Frank between now and three. And then, of course, in Seattle, you'll have B.J. Shea coming up next. Uh, again, we are back at 3. Be sure to tune in, especially if you have kids, because we're going to have your kids call in today, and we're going to have you call in as a parent and tell us what you told your kids, because I think that's the kind of thing people really need to know, all right? Because uh, we, we're not going to know any more about this by 3 o'clock than we know now, okay? So thank you, Sam Rubin, for stepping aside. Thank you to B.J. Shea for stepping aside. Uh, thank you to Frosty, Heidi, and Frank for stepping aside. And uh, we'll be back at 3 o'clock, both on 100.7 The Buzz and 97.1 The FM Talk Station. CBS News Update. I'm Tom Foti. New York's famed World Trade Center towers are no more. It was almost like you couldn't believe your eyes, like you were watching a, a science fiction movie, and you saw it just basically barrel through the building. You actually, you know, saw it going through, and then... In, on impact, all you saw was smoke. I witnessed Barry Green after two apparently hijacked jetliners struck first one, then the other of the 110-story towers.